Um, Ricardo and um, Ellen and I are going to, um, um, I'm, I'm going to act as the moderator today. My name is Marilyn Cade. Ricardo and Ellen and I and Sylvia are trying to act as coordinators for the integration of the uh, national and regional IGF initiatives into the program. So I'd like to do a little scene setting and then to move into focusing on the dialogue with all of you as coordinators or as participants in national and regional IGFs. Um, and if we're ready to get started, then I think we'll just go ahead and kick off. Uh, people will be coming in and joining us as we go. We will be ending promptly at 12.30 because I know many of you have other commitments. Uh, so we're going to speed through this, and the remote moderator will let me know if someone, if someone joins. Yes, thank you. Um, First of all, I'd like to say a few words for uh, kind of setting the scene about um, where we are in terms of national and regional IGF initiatives and what has evolved. I think for many of us, we are so busy in implementing and supporting these initiatives that we may not even be aware that the call for such activities is actually in the Tunis agenda. The IGF itself, is called for in paragraph 72. And there are a number of uh, subsequent paragraphs relevant to the issues and the focus and the way that the, uh, IG, that the Internet, Internet Governance Forum itself will be established, called for by the Secretary General of the United Nations. There is no such relationship directly to the national and regional initiatives. There are paragraphs which support um, uh, national mechanisms, paragraph 11, for instance, uh, paragraph 80 encourages the development of multi-stakeholder processes. Paragraph 101 references exchanges of information and sharing of best practices in poly policy and policy debates. Pa paragraph 110 urges avoidance of duplication of activities and proposes information exchange, creation of knowledge, sharing of best practices, and assistance in developing multi-stakeholder and public-private partnerships. And the reason I mention this to all of you is that while there is no official relationship between the national initiatives and the regional initiatives and the IGF itself, and why we call them initiatives, is that they are an organic, bottom-up development and emergence of the influence real IGF itself. And they are also consistent paragraphs that are called for but there is no official relationship. The coordinators work together very informally to try to come up with guidelines, and by consensus, those guidelines are used to govern which initiatives get listed in the, um, on, on the website, and all of you will continue to be participating in that. That's particularly important because um, what we found, and we talked about this at our organizing session on um, um, Sunday, just checking, I'm having trouble with my days, um, is the, um, the relationships that are beginning to emerge between the initiatives are one of the byproducts, really, of our working together. Today, we're going to focus on gathering information about three things and exchanging information about three topics. Um, but let me, first of all, I'm going to hand a, piece of, a couple of pieces of paper out and ask you to um, respond. First of all, we do have a sign-up sheet that we'll uh, pass around and ask you to um, sign up your name and the name of the initiative and the, uh, thank you, Anna, and, the, uh, and your email address. And secondly, I'm going to ask Anna to also distribute two tables. I need the, both of the sets of paper back. If you will look at the tables and verify if the information on the tables is accurate about your initiative. This is just a list of the national and regional initiatives that have been conducted that we know about from 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. If you also conducted an initiative in 2013, just put a checkbox on, uh, on, on in the blank space. But you'll see that there's been a continued growth and evolution of the number of initiatives, which is a really phenomenal and exciting uh, movement. So we're going to go in a round robin and ask the coordinators or uh, whoever is here representing your initiative to answer three questions. And we'll do them 
one complete round at a time, and then discuss briefly, then go to the second question, and then to the third. So let me give you the questions. It was all in my email, but let me do it again. The first question is, very, very quickly, what are the main challenges, main challenges, that you find of most impact in organizing and conducting an initiative? And then tell us which it is. A national initiative, a regional initiative, or sub-regional initiative, or I'm adding a new category called a continental initiative because of Africa's emergence as a continent-wide initiative. So to give you an example, the Arab region is a regional initiative, while Africa has actually developed a continent-wide initiative. So we're seeing some real innovation emerging, and I think that's a fantastic thing for us to try to gather. So the first one is, what are the main challenges? The second one is, what are the issues that your initiative sees reflected into the IGF itself? So what are the consistencies between the issues you're dealing with and the IGF? And the third one is what's unique in issues about your initiative that you don't see going on anywhere else? You don't see it happening at the IGF or anywhere else. Is there something unique about your initiative? And I thought that this would be an interesting um, um, uh, thing for us to talk about. I'll give you an example. In 2010, the IGF USA pioneered the use of scenarios. We took those scenarios to Russia in a sister-to-sister -sister exchange. We also did a forum on uh, the use of scenarios at the IGF, but it's not something that has caught on widely in the IGF. So I'm looking for anything that is really unique about the initiative that you've managed. And we're going to, um, due to the uh, microphone uh, environment, I think we're going to start question one, and I'm just going to hand the microphone out, and we'll pass the microphone and go. So remember to identify your initiative and then answer the question. We'll do question one, which is what are the main challenges? May I start with, with Anna from Portugal? I can start over here. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to start with main challenges. Before you start, any questions or adaptations that anyone would propose? OK. Let's kick off. Hi, I'm Gonola Astbrink, uh, Australian IGF ambassador. And I think I might be the only one from Australia here. Um, we, um, uh, we ran the second uh, Australian IGF um, just last week. Uh, so we had one last year and when one this year. And uh, talking about the challenges, uh, I suppose uh, Australia's uh, a large continent and it's a matter of ensuring that we have people from all over the country come and it's a matter of finding the right location for that. And uh, we have our capital city is quite small, Canberra. And, and we had the first one in Canberra last year and this one we had in Melbourne, which is the second largest city in Australia. So the geographical issue is, is one. Um, maybe I'll, I'll stop there and I can answer the other questions later. Okay, Mary, Nigerian IGF, and West African IGF. I don't know whether any other person is from the West Africa. And um, first, the challenge is we have a very large um, um, country and um, ability to get all to participate and crowd control. Uh, the 2013 was so much that we couldn't even con control it. We have over 600 attending, and some state of the federation were saying they were not contacted. So we have the challenge of even breaking in that within the year to see whether we can have some dialogue uh, at, at some other sub-regional level. For, for the West African IGF, the challenge is financing being able to, to get people from the, the sub-region to attend the program. 
one or two people will come from a country, so the rest will not be able to make it. So th those are the challenges. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lillian Naroka. I come from Uganda. Um, I represent the Uganda IGF and the East African IGF. Um, probably for those who are familiar with the East African IGF, it was one of the first regional IGFs um, in the whole IGF, uh, I think, um, process. But um, some of the challenges uh, we've so far faced are, um, I think in the previous year, and probably this year, is getting participation from um, government. That is for the, uh, the East African IGF. Um, this has happened um, more or less, um, the process all started in Kenya, and with a change of government, uh, the current government is, probably ICT is not on their you know, um, agenda or it's not a priority per se, so we've had that challenge. Um, for, I'll just leave it at that for the East African IGF, is, you know, government involvement and probably uh, getting consensus on uh, how to get the issues uh, forwarded or acted upon, especially the recommendations. But uh, for the Uganda IGF, the main challenge we've had is getting involvement or getting participation from the private sector. These are especially the ISPs and uh, probably the people who are into SMEs or dealing with uh, the entire ICT sector, but from the private sector. But uh, how we've probably, how we are trying to deal with it is this year, all, and even last year, we decided that uh, instead of focusing on so many IG issues, because there are quite many, we decided to have the Uganda IG hosted by the Internet uh, Society, Uganda chapter. And uh, we um, decided to focus on, if we, to hold a national forum just to focus on one issue rather than bringing many issues because that way you get one focus area, like say if it's access, then it's easier for you to get participation. I'll leave it at that, Marilyn. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sandra Hoferichter. I'm from the Eurodic, which is the European IGF and known as a continental IGF. Um, we are existing since 2008, and since this year we are running an event per year in a different country of, of Europe. So one challenge is to deal with a different host every year, which is not even a different country and a different culture. It's also a different stakeholder group. So we were dealing with governmental uh, stakeholder groups as a host. We were dealing with, um, no, currently we are dealing with a business association as a stakeholder group, which is a challenge on the one hand, but also a good thing to do and a uniqueness on the other hand, because this uh, broadens the participation of all the stakeholder groups. This is uh, generally one of the challenges, I think, of the whole internet governance process, to include all stakeholder group on, on the equal way. I mean, we know business community is still underrepresented in the whole IG process. Also, uh, participation of civil society is sometimes hard to, um, to realize. Um, yes, these are actually the most challenges. The and in for especially for Europe, it's also the participation of the Southeastern European countries. Um, West, Europe, West Europe is quite good represented, Central Europe as well, but for South East Europe, uh, it's simply the awareness is not that big as in the other parts of the world. Um, I'm Michael Rotet. I'm representing a IGF, national IGF, IGF Germany. Um, although uh, we are the hosts for the next Eurodic. <laughs> um, well, the, there are a lot of challenges, <laughs> uh, what we found out. Uh, um, mostly it's uh, about the organization as such, the setup of... Uh, we have an uh, annual e event since 2008, um, mainly in springtime. Um, th that works quite well, but setting up the event, that's uh, talking to 
different institutions in setting up the program, uh, trying to incorporate all the stakeholders. That's what we found most challenging uh, in getting representation all over Germany. The um, IGFD is normally in, uh, or is in Berlin every year, which is the capital. Um, and we have now set up an uh, internet governance platform where we invite those people who are present in, uh, in, in, in Berlin um, to get shorter uh, um, synchronization and, and shorter input, uh, sh uh, in shorter time input um, to the programs. And they are also, and, and this platform also will take care of the German input to the uh, Eurodic, so we try to um, avoid duplicate uh, efforts in, uh, in this arena and, and to have always the same people on board uh, to show a little bit of a con contingency and, uh, o over the time and not jumping back and forth uh, o over the years. But again, the organization is what we found uh, the most challenging thing to, to get these people on the one hand. And We'll see. Next question, please. Thank you. Um, well, uh, we have in, uh, in Portugal um, an uh, information society forum uh, since 2005. And this was uh, set up as a multi-stakeholder forum uh, when uh, we uh, set up the agency uh, responsible for information society. Um, it is, or it was, an uh, intergovernmental uh, forum uh, where the other stakeholders were invited. And so things like uh, digital economy, um, ICT and society, e-commerce, dat data, data privacy were discussed. Uh, in 2010, uh, we uh, realized that the time was ripe to organize a session de dedicated to internet governance. So we don't have uh, a Portuguese AGF. We, we have um, a Portuguese initiative of AGF because there is no, no uh, Portuguese IGF or uh, Spanish I, IGF or what we have is initiatives of the IGF at national level or regional level. And so we continue to have this Information Society Forum slash governance of internet. Um, it's very challenging because people don't understand what we mean because internet governance, what does it mean? The private sector, it doesn't understand at all. So in 2010, uh, it was very difficult to have uh, 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 people besides government and, um, and academia and technical communities, because these uh, uh, are RPT uh, aware. Uh, on the other hand, there is a lack of information from the media, and so people, they are not aware. There is no awareness, so l there is a lot of uh, outreach work to do. Um, and we don't have uh, so much political, well, it is not a political priority either, nowadays. Um, but once I think media starts to, to have a role and starts to, to talk about this and, and, and to write about this, I think that the political side will, will, uh, will improve. Uh, we have um, a program uh, on our uh, broadcasting TV uh, that is called information, um, civil, so civil Society. And I was already invited there uh, several times. And um, I'm always talking about Internet Governance Forum and what it is. Well, it is um, a program that is not seen, that is not watched for uh, too many people because it's, uh, it's, um, it's very cultural. But uh, nevertheless, I, I do my part <laughs> when, when I'm there. <laughs> Yeah. 
there is another challenge, the, the geographic issue. Even if, uh, if Portugal is not a, a, a large country, north and south is very difficult to spend some, at least two days in, uh, in Lisbon or Porto, or it's difficult. Thank you. I always feel like I'm on X Factor with a handheld, but I promise you I won't sing. Um, so I'm Laura Hutchison from the UK IGF. Um, in no particular order, um, we struggle with uh, participation, particularly from business, um, and the question around how long we actually make our forum last for. We've currently done it as a one-day forum. There's pressure to move to, you know, to multiple days, but then there's a the question of you know, its commitment of time for people to commit to, um, the longer... Okay. Um, the, the longer it goes on for, the harder it is for people to commit time. Um, we also struggle with getting new faces into the room, so to make the discussion appealing. As soon as you talk about internet governance, um, the same as other people have already said, people don't really understand it. It doesn't sound particularly interesting, and they don't see how relevant it is to their sort of day-to-day -day work. Um, We've also had um, a slight struggle with our structure um, and how to organize the UK IGF. Um, we feel we're in a much better place now. We relaunched earlier this year um, to have better coordination with the sort of multi-stakeholder um, committee um, to set the agenda and move sessions forward. Um, we've, already, we've always sort of funded the UK IGF, but we don't want to be a gatekeeper. We've had a, a, an issue in that we've been perceived as a gatekeeper in the UK. Um, and we're, tr we're trying to sort of step back uh, to make it more multi-stakeholder. The issue then is it needs to be coordinated in some way um, in order for things to progress, but without being controlling. Um, and they're probably our headlines. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christine Agida from the Arab IGF. And... Um, the Arab IGF is uh, pretty young. We only had our second annual meeting um, a couple of weeks ago. And um, uh, likewise, like the Eurodig, we uh, move from one um, Arab country to another every year. And we deal with different hosts, uh, which are also from different stakeholder groups. So our first host was a civil society. Uh, our second host this year was government um, of Algeria. So, um, so we have a similar challenge of having to deal with the different hosts, uh, with different uh, perceptions of uh, internet governance, different awareness levels. So, uh, so awareness is one, one issue. Uh, we've noticed, for example, this year uh, um, an increased interest from governments because the host was a government. So we've had um, ministers from the Arab region um, in, um, in, in, in the opening uh, session, which was not the case in, in, in the first one. Uh, whereas in the first one, we had more civil society, especially from the region we were in. So it actually depends on the host, which is a, actually a challenge, but a good thing actually to move to different hosts. That's one part. The second um, a challenge which is affecting actually the work is um, funding, um, um, let me say, institutionalization of funding, because we do have funds for, I mean, the hosts come in with funds, we have sponsors for the, for the annual meetings, but we have limited um, funding mechanisms for the preparation process. And uh, so, so we, we work like uh, probably other regional initiatives on vol voluntary work from different persons through our um, mag-like body that we've created. But people are not always uh, have to much time to dedicate or uh, funds to travel. So, um, so we, 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 we want maybe to, to look at uh, other experience from other regions. How do they um, manage their funds? Is there a way that maybe we can uh, copy a model to do that uh, in order to support the uh, um, inter, um, uh, act intercessional activities between a year and, and the other? Uh, thank you. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Toraida. I come from the Spanish IGF. 
<clears throat> and well, some of our challenges has, have already been mentioned. So like getting new faces every year is not that easy. Or the thing about the geographic uh, movement spread, yeah. It's not that easy to make the forum broader than Madrid, so to say. Adol Madrid is a very <coughs> big city, but, and well, we have also some, some troubles um, regarding logistics, like streaming, and because we organize the, the forum at university, and it's not that easy to coordinate every part to, to have some broadcasting. And the last thing I wanted to mention is we have tried to get involved uh, young people, so we are supposed to since we coordinate the forum from the university. But um, I don't know why we don't succeed. <laughs> and that's the main issues. Thank you. Uh, this is Yenis uh, this is from the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Uh, so uh, actually, I think our for the regional IGF uh, main challenge is uh, very similar to the other uh, regional IGFs, which is because our region is rather diverse as well. is is a huge, I mean, huge region for Asia Pacific, and and so sometimes the point of view are very different from uh, different sub region, and it may be a little bit <clears throat> difficult to really like converge uh, how we can like identify the uh, commonalities or priorities for our whole region together, and and another. Uh, Shall I continue? Yeah. And so uh, another problem is actually uh, we also facing is about the partic participations. Like it's pretty hard for us to get the private sector and also like the civil society that it is not directly uh, related to the internet. I mean uh, industry or I mean the general public. Uh, public uh, is also about relevancy that some of some of us already talk about because like outside of the industry they don't they just don't feel the immediate like. Authorities, or they don't see the relevance to participate in this kind of internet governance discussions, and so that's uh, one of the challenge. Uh, but beside the region IGF, actually, I want to talk about the youth activities that we also have, and uh, because uh, our Asia Pacific region IGF actually initiated in 2010, and uh, and in that year, we also actually parallelly organized a youth IGF, which uh, every year we did it together, and. Uh, so uh, some of the challenges actually is uh, because uh, our IGF is regional, but for the youth IGF is more like a uh, local base because we only invite university students. And also, um, and how we can, I mean, I think our youth IGF, GF is pretty successful because we actually have a group of young people, uh, which are the NAT mission ambassadors is, um, a youth program from the Dark Asia organizations, and and uh, we actually train them, and they will like be the uh, youth and peer delegates to train the uh, local university students as well. And we actually simulate a <coughs> multi-stakeholder model of this. Uh... Okay, yeah. So the challenge for this will be actually how we can like provide a sustainable path. Yeah, how we can like provide a sustainable path for uh, for the young people to really get engaged into the uh, global IGF. Um, yeah, after after they participate in this youth IGF, how can they can continue their like involvement in this IGF? Because right now, I mean, in this year, I don't really see many young people here, and especially how we can get them onto the bro panel and yeah. We have a, a, a remote participant. Yes. Can you tell us who it is? And then we'll. Okay, I'm not actually responding other than nodding. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just trying to speed us through this because I know we're running out of time. So try to focus right now just on challenges so we can make one round and then we'll go back to issues. Uh, I guess Yana already covered the um, the the Asia Pacific one, um, and I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is Edmund Chung from Dot Asia, um, and I guess I, I'll raise one 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 additional one. Uh, 
we have uh, been uh, actively uh, helping get start up a um, a cow IGF, uh, and it's a it's a new initiative. It's uh, it's going to happen next month uh, in Macau. Uh, the biggest challenge there is just to even get the 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 idea uh, because uh, uh, it's very important to get the um, the government in, involved in in the discussion, uh, getting through uh, just explaining to them what the IGF is and and what is there for, uh, and also explaining to 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 uh, the industry and the businesses. Uh, and civil society, what, what it is that that was that was the biggest challenge. But this is because this is brand new, so uh, it's probably uh, a different situation. Thanks. Thanks, and um, Edmund, we're going to hear in a, at the end of this wrap up. Then we'll hear from Brazana as well about another initiative that's emerging. Let me go to Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Challenges only. Yeah, I can follow the rules. Uh, Cheryl Langdonau, and uh, uh, as probably uh, best described in the uh, AUDA uh, context here, the regulator of the .au space, because we are uh, the funder and primary host and organiser of the second now AUIGF. I know you've heard from one of our um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, AUIGF ambassadors uh, in, with Ganella at the front, um, but I, I wanted to pick up on a particular challenge that has been echoed a little bit around the table, but I think it might have a greater impact to the regional IGFs very shortly. And that is, uh, as we are developing and putting resources, human and otherwise, into our national initiative, our choices are where we can then put additional support, for example, to the APR IGF. And having been involved from uh, the very beginning with the 2010 APR IGF, I can assure you that you know cold hard cash and humans are now getting more focused on our national initiative than we are back into our regional one. We're still not ignoring the regional one, but there is a, a shift of focus. It's, it's simple resource management. And I think we all need to be aware of that as, as a particular challenge. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl, I'm just going to comment. It's Marilyn. Um, I actually, I hope to come back to that. And if we can't take it up in the discussion, then maybe we'll come back to it. Because I might myself have a premise that the most effective work is done at the national initiatives. I think that'll be a question to come back to and kind of examine. Um, and perhaps there is you know, they are very different and for different purposes. So it'll be good to come back to. Uh, my name is Walid al sakaf I'm not a coordinator of any IGF, thank God. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, but I'm, part, I'm a member of the MAG, of the Arab uh, IGF, and I, you know, empathize with Christina. She's done a lot of hard work. I, uh, I stand in solidarity. And I just uh, organized a few workshops in the first and second, and also moderated a panel. And I thought, uh, thought that the major challenge for during my uh, organizing and moderating was the mindset of the participants on what multi-stakeholder means. The very basic premise of what is a multi-stakeholder uh, approach. So uh, I was contemplating actually organizing the Yemen IGF, where I come from, uh, National IGF. Uh, but before I proceed with that, we really we need to formulate an an idea that is clear and concise and uh, holds within it some balance. Because if we say multi-stakeholderism, it could be that you have, you know, 70% uh, of representation of just one, 30% distributed on the other multi-stakeholders. And even if they were equal, some of them have a higher, greater weight. Uh, and so how do we actually uh, verify that we uh, practice what we preach when it comes to multi-stakeholders, and in a region like Yemen, which is coming out of a revolution and change and transformation, we really want to start with a clean slate with very clear ideas. Um, it's Marilyn again. I'm, I'm going to give you an observation, and then we're going to go to Stefan, and we'll start again. Um, I, I think you'll see there's a study that um, Dima Epstein and I are working on of the National Regional IJFs, and some of you have been gracious enough to already participate in them. I, I think that uh, one thing, I'll, I'm going to pose this as a question. We're going to go to issues, but I'm going to pose this as a question. I, I'm not actually sure that we can have uh, more rigid um, criteria about what the definition or balance of multi-stakeholder is that is imposed in a top-down manner. 
Each country and each region, I think, has unique characteristics. What the coordinators have proposed so far that's on the website is that you have at least three of the five, but there's no requirement of balance. Uh, but that you maintain certain other characteristics, openness, transparency, et cetera. But we'll come back and talk about this and because I, I think we also should, shouldn't treat, the, make the bar so high that a new initiative can't emerge. Stefan, you wanted to uh, share your uh, role as a coordinator. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stefan van Gelder, not as a coordinator, but as part of an initiative to start uh, an IGF in France, and uh, the challenges there have been huge. Uh, they have So far, uh, to this day, we've not been able to organize an IGF locally in France, uh, which is quite surprising. Uh, an initiative was started um, by both uh, someone from the French government and Bertrand de la Chapelle, who I'm sure many of you know, uh, a few weeks ago, of which I am part of, to start an IGF in France. It has uh, garnered the support of the French government and uh, uh, some uh, key uh, stakeholders in France, and we've been able to secure a date of 9th of January 2014 to hold uh, the, uh, or at least what we hope will be a, a French version of, of a local IGF, uh, in Paris, so exciting news for us, and I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. I'm going to go to Laura, and then I'm going to ask um, Fasana to tell us about the Persian IGF emergence, and then we're going to do issue. So I'll just quickly, I'm Ellen Strickland, and I um, am the coordinator for the program for NetHui, which is the New Zealand IGF um, initiative. I'm also involved with the Pacific um, IGF, but we we had one, we haven't had it in a while, so I'll talk about New Zealand and the challenges. And I could echo the geographic spread issue, um, private sector youth, some things I've heard, but I wanted to just reiterate from our experience, we've been very lucky. We have our third, we had 600 participants, 3,000 people online, really amazing community-led sort of creation of the program. Um, and they hate the term multi-stakeholderism, but they're doing it you know, and they're helping us construct it, and that's awesome. Um, but the big challenge is that takes a lot of work. You know, you're actually working with people, you know, and, and helping, you know, uh, them to come up with the sessions and to work with each other, you know, around different perspectives on different topics. It takes patience and time and the skills, you know, necessary for them, you know, in terms of capacity building for facilitators and moderators is a huge amount of effort and you know and from them and from us and so I, I just that commitment and that that effort that's needed is a challenge and finding something in it for everybody so that they can make make that time so we're talking about challenges for existing initiatives I'm going to ask Fazana to just briefly announce the formation of a new initiative and then we're going to go on with issues where's the microphone Thank you very much, Marilyn. My name is Farzan Abadi, and uh, we have recently initiated, well, we are still in the process of initiation of uh, the Persian IGF, and uh, we call it Persian IGF because of the language. Uh, so it's a regional thematic um, IGF. It, it is going to cover the Persian-speaking uh, uh, people in different countries, such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Tajikistan, and, and uh, other regions, uh, Kurdistan. And uh, our plan is to uh, create interest in uh, the community and different stakeholder groups to uh, join us and to contribute to internet governance discussions and policy making in other processes, international or regional, and uh, and uh, well, uh, we are planning to have an annual meeting. It is not, uh, we, we don't know the location yet, but uh, hopefully it will happen and, and we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna run out of time. I'm gonna ask you to do this very, very quickly. And I let's combine two and three. So 
the issues that you see reflected from your initiative, you see those issues or a version of them. Don't go into detail, but the issues that you see reflected in the IGF and then identify the thing, if there is anything, that is so unique about your initiative that it is not reflected. And, you know, I'll just say the reason I wanted Farzana to uh, mention the emergence of the Persian uh, initiative is they are they're organizing in a slightly different way. It's not a geographic organization in terms of a, a specific land mass. It is a, a language and cultural organization, which is very unique um, to and a, um, a phenomenal innovation. So can I come back over here? I don't know where the microphone is again. So what are the issues that you see reflected in? So that could be quickly something like cybersecurity, human rights, child online protection. I'm saying fast, right? Uh, critical information resources, and then what's unique if there's something that's so unique about yours that's not reflected? Okay, quickly. <laughs> Again, Gonola Astbrink, um, Australian IGF ambassador, and I'm sure Cheryl will um, talk about other issues, but uh, um, I'm going to mention mainstreaming of people with disabilities. Um, I'm one of uh, six ambassadors for the Australian IGF and, and each ambassador had an opportunity uh, to organise a workshop in their area of expertise. Um, when it comes to disability, it's often a forgotten area. And we see that um, on, the, on the global IGF, this one here, um, there still are barriers to participation, remote participation by blind people. And there's always that issue on how to make mainstream technology accessible. And we had a deaf-blind person, so I'm saying this is quite unique, a deaf-blind person in the Australian IGF talking about how she uses technology to communicate. So you just imagine how that works. Um, there is um, a presentation actually on Friday with some work being done in India. Okay, all right. So I think it's just mainstreaming technology and how various um, organizations can do that. CCTLDs could look at best practice um, across the board in both national, regional, and the IGF itself. I'm not sure there's something very unique, but I think access. Access is the key, okay? Access to technology. Uh, we had um, 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 a physically challenged person during our IGF. He, uh, he, he was there, he, he wanted inclusion. Inclusion, access and inclusion, those are the two major things. Before you pass on, so, um, that is the unique thing that you're seeing, but what about the consistent issues that are take that are being discussed in the Nigerian IGF that you're also seeing um, repeated in the themes or the workshops or the main sessions here? Um, yeah, uh, because we we model the the na national IGF. Um, to what happens, the discussion areas. We don't have so many workshops, but we discuss around the six major areas, that is um, openness and privacy, access and uh, diversity, you know, just the th three major areas. But, but when it comes to uniqueness of, of, uh, of issue, what I said is inclusion, Let's include the youth, let's include the children, let's include the, the, the physically challenged, let's include the women, mainstream all this. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll talk from the Uganda experience, not the East African uh, experience. Um, we tend to look at old issues, but however, this year, the uniqueness that I can share is uh, we usually do have online discussions on, ma on different mailing lists. They are purely online. We identify different issues, access, cybersecurity, human rights. So this year, we just decided to focus on just two issues at the 
at the face-to-face -face meeting, and uh, we felt that it was um, it was successful because we were able to get all the stakeholders participate, including the private sector. So we focused on um, um, improving uh, infrastructure and uh, human rights, freedom of expression. Those are the two issues that we focused on. And I think uh, for us, this is something that we think will work for us. We tend to identify the main issues attracting discussion on the, on the, from the online discussions and then just pull together the stakeholders just to address or talk about those two issues. All, it can be one issue and then adopt recommendations and use them to engage with, uh, with government. Sandra Hofrichter again from the Eurodic. Um, the uniqueness of the Eurodic, uh, to my point of view, goes directly into the um, consistency of what Eurodic can contribute to, to the whole process. Um, the uniqueness is the dynamic of the process. Uh, this is uh, being recognized by many national and regional and even by the global IGF dynamic of process in terms of remote participation. We were one of the first to include uh, live captioning and uh, remote participation through one stream and this became later on a, a, a matter of fact for the global IGF as well. We have a very dynamic process in terms of the session format. We introduced the flash sessions which are now being uh, held here at the global IGF as well which gives smaller initiatives also the uh, opportunity to introduce themselves and to get into the discussion. And also the inclusion of the young people is something which is uh, exemplary in, in Europe and in particular in uh, uh, during the, the Eurodic and which is uh, going to be improved from the, f from the whole uh, IG, IG process. And another thing which I think is unique, but I might be wrong and I will be happy to, to learn more about this, we are producing the messages. Because the IG pro, uh, internet governance process is always criticized for not producing an outcome. This is part of the problem while the business sector is not participating because they have to have an outcome. Would you pass that around so people can see it? Because yes. That's been, that's been I will pass that around and I don't have, uh, maybe not enough copies with me, but at the Eurodic booth we have more and you can you can get them there. Okay, Anna has some, some of them as well. So I think this is something which uh, is uh, uh, taken over by many European initiatives already and this is also something which can be maybe uh, a helpful tool for other national, uh, regional and sub-regional initiatives to attract more stakeholder groups to get the business involved and so on and so forth. Because it's not a binding document, it's a sort of a recommendation and it reflects the discussion in a very open uh, manner. That's it. Uh, Michael Rotert from the IGF Germany. Um, that three things to mention. Uh, one is um, we have similar to um, the IGF he here as well as to the Eurodic the youth participation, and 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 this works out pretty well in in, in Germany with set up the day before uh, on Sunday uh, to enable the youth. Uh, um, even if there are no holidays to, to set up uh, programs, meetings, and stuff like that, which means we have the IGFD, German IGF, uh, always on Mondays. <laughs> well, um, this is one point. Another point is w what we've seen over the last couple of years is an increasing participation of parliamentarians who are interested in the uh, various topics. And finally, um, we avoid parallel sessions. We don't have parallel sessions. We have a single stream going through the day in order to make it participants uh, or easier to, to follow that stuff. So Michael, I'm having trouble finding space for the IGF USA, so my excuse, uh, my explanation of why I'm doing only one uh, session is going to be that I'm following the model of Germany. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to Anna. Thank you very much. Um, so, number one, uh, because of uh, Erodic, we also have the messages from Lisbon. Uh, well, uh, this year they are messages from, from Lisbon as well, but normally we, we have the national messages from Lisbon. Yeah. 
my second point is um, is to uh, to stress what the Nigerian colleague already mentioned. Uh, I think that we have much more um, empowerment sessions, capacity building oriented sessions, ICT and, and society components. So uh, all these parts of the inclusion policy, I think they are missing a lot here. And, uh, and we, we have a lot of, oh, of these in, uh, in, the, in the Portuguese uh, in initiative of IGF. Um, another thing that we are always uh, discussing, and it's very interesting because it's, it's uh, evolving each year as, as normal, is the amazing role of the social networks and the power of the social networks. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, finally, I would like to stress that we started to, 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 to use the sign language exactly because of the web accessibility policy that we have for more than 15 years. Thank you, Laura Hutchison from the UKIGF. Um, in terms of issues that come directly from our agenda to here, um, we have Identity and Trust. Um, BCS ran a workshop at the UKIGF and then used the model um, to run a workshop here. Um, the same with uh, global partners who are running sessions on internet governance principles. Um, cyber security is also something that featured very heavily on our agenda in the UK and also here. Um, there's also a youth IGF run by Childnet in the UK um, and they've got a delegation here in uh, Bali. Um, in terms of what is unique, um, we had a very interactive discussion on child protection in the UK. There's some very high profile media cases which you may be aware of which means it's it's a, a very hot topic in the UK and although it is on the agenda here it's not reflected in quite the same way um, that we're discussing it in the UK um, we're not particularly unique but we do have a really strong uh, par parliamentarian government uh, participation in the UK IGF um, we're pleased to have an MP here with us in Bali um, and the minister was obviously here yesterday and has spoken at, I think, every one of our UK IGF events. So that's a really good level of engagement. Thanks. So I'll say one other thing that's unique about the UK and is a role model, and that is not only do you bring a minister, but you make him stay the entire time. <laughs> This is Christine from the Arab IGF again, and um, in terms of issues, I think um, uh, the discussions were pretty much um, um, similar to the ones that happen here, at, are happening at the Global IGF. So uh, we had a, um, a lot of discussions about youth empowerment and um, how, how to have the uh, youth in the Arab region move from just consumers of the Internet. actually um, uh, and it was uh, actually repeated in both uh, meetings so uh, so it's it's a persistent topic there was also discussions about coordination of legal frameworks among uh, the Arab countries and especially in uh, the areas of protecting citizens and um, privacy and uh, security and it was identified that a lot of capacity building has to be done in that specific areas in terms of uh, stakeholders, not only those present uh, within the uh, um, internet governance discussions but also across to those that implement and uh, do the legal uh, uh, systems. Um, um, issues that I think could uh, may have been a bit uh, uh, unique um, are issues related to the DNS industry and uh, and I think this is only normal because of the emergence of uh, um, IDN domain names. So there was a lot of discussions not only about IDN because there is a lot of maturity there, but about the industry itself. That there are no there is no well developed industry of registrars and registry in the region. So that was a bit unique. Another thing that, may, that I think might have been unique is um, uh, the issue of relating access to content. So there was a lot of discussion about um, uh, how um, investment in broadband networks and in access is negatively affected uh, by the lack of content and by content being pushed out of the region. 
So that was one issue. Uh, but I'm interested that um, um, it was very interesting to listen to uh, uh, you, Riddick, uh, um, uh, and Portugal uh, t talk about the messages because this is one thing that was identified as, but it was actually messages sent out to governments. So, um, so we were thinking to have like brief uh, flash messages come from the IGF sent to the Arab ICT ministers through the League of Arab States, being the policy makers and so, so, so. But it's good actually to learn about uh, the existence of messages coming out in general to all stakeholders. Thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. Um, okay, so w several things are particular about the Spanish IGF. One of them is that it was launched in 2008 and started with bi-monthly meetings. And uh, what we actually did is uh, we prepared each topic, uh, each, each meeting was for one topic. So we had a long time, well, those two months, to, to um, work on uh, you know, background information, to prepare the debate, to involve the stakeholders. And, and it was a very uh, inclusive process, and also we could focus on one topic at a time. Also, the audience would vary. Like, the kind of people that would come to one topic, they would not come to the next meeting, maybe, because they were not as interested in that kind of topic. Um, in that sense, it, it was less uh, didactic or less educational, uh, because everybody was going to the topics that they actually were interested in, and not, the, and not others that you could benefit from just, you know, because you were uh, in the room and then you decide to stay and learn something new. Um, however, with time we evolved and uh, we actually took a lot of example uh, on the Eurodig. Um, it was a lot of effort organizing those bi-monthly meetings and uh, we, I don't know, we decided there were a lot of uh, advantages to, to move into uh, one uh, event uh, a year. So we, we started to copy, basically, the Eurodig. We also implemented the messages, um, and uh, we also worked on remote participation, mostly through Twitter. And we do create hashtags for each session so that there are par parallel conversations going on and, and things like that. Um, something that is unique, uh, I think, about the IGF, about the Spanish IGF, is that we do have that... Um, we have inherited that previous work that would go into all the sessions at the beginning. So we really force, <laughs> very, you know, in a very mean fashion, uh, we really force our stakeholders to work a lot before the event. So we start by asking for proposals, and when the proposals come, uh, we ask for uh, participants that are interested not in being a panelist, but in being part of the organization team. Uh, uh, and they don't have to be panelists in the end, but they do have to organize a lot of work and, and provide background documents and come up with policy questions and, I don't know, generate a pre-debate that is sometimes the most intense debate. But sometimes by the time it goes to the stage, uh, uh, the debate, they, they, there are all many things that have already been agreed on and they are published. So the public already knows what, you know, this is not going to be tackled because this we already agree on. And we go directly to the issues that are complicated and that need, that, you know, that have different perspectives and that really need to be spoken out. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something. And uh, another particular thing is that uh, we have a very uh, heavy participa participation from the private sector. And um, it was actually, this started uh, with the impulse of, uh, uh, Telefonica Foundation, and over the time, uh, Google Spain, uh, Vodafone Foundation, and Orange have also uh, uh, gotten involved in the funding. Um, and we do have, I guess, sort of a telco feel <laughs> of flavor in, 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 in our IGF, which we really, really try to, to, to work on. As it, that, that means to expand to other areas to make it more, uh, uh, to cover more topics. Um, and, uh, oh yes, and the sign language. We have also, in 2012, we did a session on uh, um, accessibility, web accessibility. So they kind of required, which, I mean, it was great, they, they, but I'm, I'm just pointing that it was them that mentioned how ironic it was that we were actually holding a session on web accessibility, yet our webcast was not accessible, our web page was not accessible, and so and so. So we, they forced us to work a lot on, on our issues. And uh, I think that's it. Anything you want to add? Um, 
I'm going to say something real quickly about the IGF USA before we, we, we move on here. Um, so IGF USA actually started out in 2007, 2008 um, uh, with half-day events that were multiple events a year that were built around, we did them before and after the planning sessions, and they were largely to help people to prepare for participation in planning for the IGF and to try to raise awareness. And then in 2009, we launched the first IGF USA with a full day event. One thing, one other thing that's unique about us is we have a uh, relationship with uh, Elon University's Imagining the Internet. And the, uh, besides uh, webcasting, we have um, video reporters who cover each of the sessions and do a, um, uh, what really is, uh, although they are students, they're working under Jana Anderson's um, coordination. And you can find on our, our site, igf-usa.us, um, the, um, the video report stories. And it's been a really uh, unique way to uh, cover what is happening. Because lots of people, particularly government policymakers, won't watch an entire webcast. But there's a one to two page story. And it's been, uh, although we do use Twitter, we really have found that our relationship with imagining the internet is building a different approach to documentation. We also, as I said, we pioneered the use of scenarios in 2010 and uh, 2011. And we also had a focus on um, the use of ICTs and internet governance and disaster. And that was actually initially driven not because of natural disasters in the United States, but because many of our participants were heavily involved in recovery in Haiti. And so the initial interest came from the uh, involvement of several companies and the U.S. government in working in Haiti after the hurricane and the uh, then uh, we've begun to have so many natural disasters in the United States uh, due to the climate change, et cetera, that we're actually continuing to focus on that area. And I don't see that, you know, I think Japan's uh, also been focused and uh, interested in that. But it's not an issue that has, has spread. It's something that's somewhat unique. Let's move on quickly, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so this is Yanis again. Uh, I'll talk about the UVIGF. And uh, I think uh, actually our, our UVIGF cover uh, many topics that more pertaining to the young people's, which like such as copyright, privacy, and uh, cyber addiction. But uh, I think one of the very uh, core issues that they have discussed is really about the uh, the youth empowerment and engagement, that uh, which most of the IGFs has mentioned about. Because I think uh, the empowerment is also in terms of like uh, how we can help them to really understand what IG is. And I, because I think they need... Uh, really need capacity building before they can really uh, participate in discussing these issues which is uh, I mean yeah complicated for them somehow and and so and another thing is about the engagement that how uh, right now I think most of them don't really think that they're, they're heard and they really want to like see how they can uh, participate in 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 uh, in the sense that they can really being heard from the other uh, from the other panelists and not just like within among their uh, youth environment so I guess uh, right now I think it'd be really good if we can like really collaborate and how we can see more like youth participation in the global IGF level. Okay. Um, Edmund Chung from Dot Asia here. Uh, in terms of the A Asia Pacific Regional IGF, uh, the the program so far over the last four four years has been. Uh, very much designed around the global IGF sort of uh, stream. So um, the the issues are, are quite, uh, you know, the si similar topics are, are being discussed. Um, and I, I think there there has been some discussion about having more weight for uh, local or, or regional themes. However, uh, w I think um, uh, Yanis mentioned earlier about the the challenges is because of the diversity of the uh, of the region. Um, I, I guess it's uncertain how 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 different it will be in a, in a sense. However, uh, one particular theme that's you know uh, coming up is is that it's uh, it's sort of a ground for preparation for the, for the uh, global IGF. In um, this year, I think there were at least two or three 
sessions, workshops um, that uh, that were in the APR IGF, but also here in uh, Global IGF. So there was a. Uh, it's almost like a preparatory uh, session allows the the Asian perspective, um, even though it could be diverse, but it allows. Uh, Asian participants to 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 discuss the issue and then bring it to uh, to the global IGF. So I think that's um, that's an interesting development. Um, what's unique, I guess, Yanis uh, mentioned one of them. Uh, we we do have a youth IGF camp that goes along with the uh, the APR IGF every time. And um, I guess another, I was trying to figure out what you know, think up what what is unique. Um, I don't know whether this is unique, but at least we we have a uh, a what is called a multiling uh, multilingual multi stakeholder steering group, um, which is pretty much open, fully open. Anybody can volunteer to be part of the organizing uh, uh, committee, uh, and you know uh, that who who is willing to to you know to to work in the, the based on the operating principles that we've now adopted. I don't know whether that's... Um, you know, that's interesting. It's Marilyn. We have that in the IGF USA as well. Um, you, all you have to do is agree to uh, adhere to the principles and show up um, and do what I tell you to. Um, that's a joke. <laughs> but but the um, we've been considering whether we're going to change that. And it's been very interesting, just a, a quick aside. Um, when we first formed the organizing structure, we couldn't reach an agreement on um, civil society wanted to have an election and uh, rigid allocation of seats. And we couldn't reach an agreement on what the organizing structure would be. And we couldn't reach an agreement on calling anyone a chair. So my title is actually Chief Catalyst. And we have no a hierarchy, um, which, you know, for good or bad, and, you know, I'm not proposing it for everyone, but it is, we have 87 people on the steering group list, and about 22 of them do the work, <laughs> which probably sounds, you know, pretty much... Um, I know we need to move on. I just wanted to say something before we move on. The other thing that I might want to mention is that every year we have had a workshop on fraud and risk in the new GT in, in GTLDs that has been self-generated by the community. So not the new GTLD program, but the dealing with fraud and risk and abuse in, um, in generic top-level domains. And that's been a kind of interesting uniqueness that I've seen there as well. Cheryl, and then... Thank you very much, Cheryl Langdon, Oregon from Australia. Um, in terms of, uh, again, very young, two years down, we've been committed to the regional and the global initiatives uh, more than our own for uh, a number of years. Uh, we've deliberately designed to be more in keeping with the global IGF theme, so similar to what you'll see in our AP regional one. Um, but there are a couple of points of departure and uh, uh, one of the points of difference I think that uh, we're quite pleased with, albeit not absolutely unique, is our uh, ambassadors program, which of course takes them deliberately uh, from planning workshops in Australia, running workshops in Australia and then being funded. And of course it's just a really good idea in the Antipodes, isn't it, New Zealand, um, that uh, that we do these sorts of things. And of course we've got all of our, uh, of our six uh, ambassadors uh, that are empanelled here at the Global IGF, not in one panel but in often several workshops and panels. There is a I think one port of departure, um, and that would be the fact that uh, one of the uh, the titles of um, our uh, ambassador Miguel Woods' work in Australia was accelerating the growth of the Australian tech startup ecosystem, and I would suggest that's something that isn't coming up into the global IGF. Uh, there are business interests which I don't think are necessarily being met yet at global and perhaps there's a sub-regional and regional opportunity there. Um, in terms of other um, slight uniqueness is the commitment we have had from our um, high level government um, and particularly since we had the little shifting of the deck chairs and uh, who was captaining the ship um, immediately before our internet governance forum, um, the fact that we got the, uh, the new secretary of the Department of Communications there um, when the ink was hardly dry on his business cards um, and he did, Drew Clark, I'd like to recognise the fact he spent a whole uh, two-thirds of a day and that's an awful lot of time in a, in a government leader's uh, life. Um, we get uh, currently serving politicians and we 
we still had the pre previous Minister for Communications drop in uh, to see how we're going. So he had an official capacity last year, but figured even though he didn't have to turn up this year, uh, that he would anyway. And I think that they're, they're good uh, points of perhaps departure. Um, and uh, I think that should be it for me. Yes, it's Walid again. Um, I, I compliment perhaps uh, Christina's comments about the Arab IGF, uh, she, which she's mentioned eloquently, but I also want to mention something in particular about the Arab IGF. I think it might be a blessing or a curse that it was formed based on government's decision, the ministers, the Arab ministers, because they have taken the initiative. Uh, and once the government has been the initiator, then there could be a string attached, and, and that is a problem later on in the process. So there might be um, a, a possible evolution to pulling it out of government control in one way or the other in the future, so as it, it could have this uh, idea of bringing in organizational structural reforms so it can have more civil society presence, business presence in the organization committee. Not that they're doing a bad job, you're doing really great, but it helps also expand the outreach because there is suspicion, as I've seen from others and governments, whenever you hear Arab governments, you know why uh, there has been a history. And then there's another unique aspect, is that the Arab region is going under transformation, so you have a huge divide on the same panel between different individuals. I was at the Algerian um, openness uh, uh, session, and there were extremely diverse opinions on the same panel. That is a healthy prospect, because then you reflect the real multi-stakeholders, real diverse opinion, but also, it could also start spark you know, uh, some sort of backlash. Uh, what happened is that while I was moderating, an interesting comment came from the floor saying, why do you allow a particular you know, critical comment on a, uh, a particular uh, Arab government. And I was really surprised uh, because this was supposed to be a forum. That's it. That's what it's meant for. So the mindset of Arab governments is, has not changed. And, and it's, it's also a challenge for us, in particular in the Arab world, because of the long history of dealing with, you know, oppressive uh, regimes. I'm going to ask a couple of general questions of the room here. Um, how many of you, uh, in addition to participating in a national, regional, uh, or global IGF, also participate in ICANN or ICANN-related activities and meetings in some way? And Anna does too. Okay. So I'm just looking for commonalities here. How many of you also speak or participate in other meetings where you talk about Internet governance issues? Mira, you have to raise your hand. You came to a FICTA. <laughs> I, I follow you guys around the world. I know what you do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, work with Dima to do a, a kind of a questionnaire to come back and look for other places where we're seeing the spread of the, what I'm almost thinking, beginning to think of as the new Internet governance DNA, uh, where people are taking the concepts or the uh, policy messages that are emerging and are beginning to take them in into other spaces. So I'm, I'm going to summarize here. We were trying to identify what are major challenges. The one thing that I was actually kind of surprised about, I'm surprised I didn't hear a lot more clarity about the challenges of funding. I think you were pretty soft on the barriers that funding presents. The we pulled out some ideas, and I think the resources. The other concept I want you to think about, if you have a chance to read the uh, thought paper that Dima Epstein did, which is just a preliminary overview of the research, high-level research with four nationals and four regionals, you'll see he's introduced the concept of the idea entrepreneur. And one of the things that I am really seeing in the national and regional IGFs is the significant importance of um, uh, commitment and um, idea entrepreneurs, catalysts, who are sustaining and holding the whole um, a set of activities together, almost like startups. 
And what I'm kind of seeing is that same kind of passion and commitment that is going on. I'm also seeing um, you know, a huge amount of flow of uh, resource work between, and I think um, Ricardo's going to hold a session tomorrow, and maybe one of the things that could be thought about is, you know, what, what are the human linkages, not just the idea linkages? Ricardo, if I could ask if that's something that would sound, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I, I think also I'm going to try to do some notes and ask you guys to look at them. Um, and particularly, I'm going to try to capture some of the uniqueness. Um, but also, uh, I do think, and let me just ask for a show of hands. Do most of you, I heard some of you say it, but do most of you feel that generally there is strong consist consistency on issue topics? I'm not saying on treatment, on issue topics with the IGF and your, um, your initiative. Okay, I would not put the IGF USA's hand up because there's not for us. We do no national issues and we focus really on internet governance of internet governance. So we're probably very unique in that and when, uh, when we, use, we, see, we do the report, we'll, we'll see that. Um, I wanna thank all of you for coming. I'm not gonna keep you longer, but I am gonna ask two things from you. You really, if you are not receiving the IGF regionals um, list, then we need to hear from you so we can make sure that that's corrected, if, any, if that's true for any of you. And I want need, now need to know who has the sign-up sheet and who has the, um, the little sheet that had the um, uh, list of initiatives, because now I know something new and that is we need to, I'm going to send um, um, a spreadsheet back out and ask you to identify if you held events prior to 2009. So we can capture, don't you think, Ellen? Uh, we could capture, and, and, and so the IGF USA, I'm going to be very example oriented here. We held an event post wicket that was sponsored by the IGF USA and it was assessing the implications of the, IG, of the wicket on internet governance. So that wasn't an IGF um, initiative, it wasn't caught, but it was sponsored by the IGF USA. So if you've held events like that, that you're taking responsibility for, you could list those as well. We just have um, one comment or question from the remote participant. A question, yep. Do we need to get you a mic, please? Yeah. Uh, this is for Marilyn. Uh, what about I can involvement in national IG events? Uh, what I can involvement has yes. there been a national IGF, IGF event? event? Not nearly enough. However, um, there's huge individual participation from. Um, um, board members and from elected members in the community and for participants and they do make financial contributions of, of a small amount to help um, uh, fund some of the local events. They provide speakers. Um, I, we've been at IGF USA, we have always had um, um, a board member that's local to the United States and um, we've, we've primarily focused on the, the SSR team for participation, the Security Stability Resiliency Team. I've seen board members uh, heavily attending a, a number of the national and regional initiatives. Um, and I know um, there's been board member participation um, in your... The other thing I should just say is uh, board members don't actually represent ICANN. Um, so very often they're attending in their individual capacity, but the, the organization has helped somewhat with, with funding from time to time. You wanted to say something? Yes, ma'am. It's Sandra Hufferter from the Juridic. I must um, confess that uh, we had a very exemplary uh, participation of ICANN in the recent Juridic. Fadi Shahade was on stage. He participated for two days. 
um, they organized and they financed a pre-event for the Euralo, for the Internet uh, User Association for, for Europe, one day prior to the, uh, uh, to the Eurodic, and they funded participation of Euralo. And uh, they organized a side event at about new GTLDs. And uh, they also met the Portuguese.pt community. So the participation of ICANN in the last Eurodic was astonishing. Marlene, if I may? Well. Yeah, just a minute. Can I just see if that was responsive? And then we'll go to Christine, and then I'm going back to Ellen. It's the same question. Oh. It's the same question. May I have one? May I? Okay, it's, uh, uh, we had actually also at the Arab IJF remarkable participation from ICANN, and not only from ICANN, but also from the technical community. So they, uh, in terms of sponsorships, they're always there to help us intermediate and in the annual meetings. Um, the, re the regional offices uh, uh, heavily participate in uh, uh, the agenda, in the MAG meetings, and uh, we've actually had an open consultation between two meetings that was partnered with ICANN, and it was a remarkable meeting in Dubai uh, where we also had FADZI and we had a board member and we had ministers from the Arab region and we had CEOs from companies, so it was a remarkable event in terms of consultation. So, yeah, uh, we have a remarkable participation from them. All right. Yeah, so I think we're wrapping up. I just wanted to make a, a, another side comment about um, contributions from the regional and national um, initiatives into the main IGF and just remind people... Uh, First of all, we've been having a little bit of trouble with the IGF regional list the last couple days in terms of moderation, and apparently some messages have been getting stuck and not getting through. So I just wanted to say that if you're interested in um, speaking as a regional or national IGF in one of the focus sessions um, on, on a session that might be relevant, that you feel is relevant to, you know, to the content of your initiative, to please contact me and we can set it up so that you're called on to speak you know, as a regional national initiative. So. And just to remind everybody, on the one hand, the emerging issues session is um, focused on surveillance, but there will be an opportunity for um, people to make comments about other issues that they want to raise. So. Um, we'll talk about whether, um, you know, after, after Ricardo, maybe one thing to think about is, are there particular messages that we could pull out of what we heard today, what we heard on Sunday, what we hear tomorrow, that we would want to put forward? And, you know, I, I think I've gathered some. We'll circulate them. And, um, but um, awareness, helping to raise the visibility, um, stable funding, uh, you know, a variety of things that I think after tomorrow we could try to, uh, and then circulate. Um, thank you so much for everyone for your participation. Uh, I invite those who are interested uh, to continue this conversation uh, talking about what are the impacts uh, or your main takeaways from the global IGF into your regional and local IGF to join me tomorrow uh, at the end of uh, the, the afternoon in the same room. So thank you so much again for your participation and looking forward to see you and exchange more information.